Hello everyone, welcome to a new video and I hope this one is going to be really useful if you're off to Glastonbury Festival this year or I suppose actually any festival, this advice mostly applies to most camping, festi camping music festivals. So first of all I apologise for the noise of the traffic, um, if you're new here then well first of all welcome, welcome to my channel, I hope you enjoy watching and and you may not know then that I actually live in the village where Glastonbury Festival takes place. So right now, as I'm filming this, all the trucks are going past. Most of the fence is up now, but you get all the little fences and the tractors are going past quite regularly. So that's the noise in the background. So let's dive straight into this video, which is going to be about how to prepare for Glastonbury. And there'll be a packing list as well coming up. But knowing me and how my brain works, I'll probably, it probably won't be quite as organised as that. <laughs> so, number one, first thing you have to do now <laughs> is get out your tent. If you haven't had it out since the last festival in 2019, then definitely do that. Pitch it up in your garden, take it to the park, pitch it up and give it a bit of a clean out. If you've used it before, get rid of the rubbish that's probably still in there. <laughs> Maybe even give it a wash. As I'm filming this, it's a beautiful hot day, so it's the perfect time to, to give it a wash and let it dry. Also, oh, first of all, actually, the first thing you should do right now, if you haven't got one already, is buy a can of waterproofing spray. That's another thing you could probably do to help your tent this year, give it a going over with a waterproof spray, because, yeah, it's gonna be nice this week, which makes me nervous for next week. Mm. I do recommend the pop-up tents because they are so lightweight. If you've not been to Glastonbury Festival before you may not realise how far you might have to walk between your car and where you want to pitch the tent. It can be at least a half hour walk and a half hour walk holding everything that you want for the weekend. With a lot, well it's almost a week, that's a lot of weight to carry so as light a tent as possible I do recommend it. But don't go for the cheapest. Don't buy the cheapest one in the mountain warehouse outlet. <laughs> we made that mistake a few years ago and came back and there was basically a huge puddle of water in the bottom of it. Luckily we were just using it as a sort of base camp because I live here, I tend to come home here. So it's been a few years since I actually camped in the festival but a good quality tent makes the difference if you can afford one go for one with the double skin which means you've got the outer layer and then you've got an inside layer you are much more likely to stay dry yeah the things to invest in are where you want to sleep and what you put on your feet so am i moving on am i ready to move on from tents yes i think that's everything to say about tents for now oh no it's not no it's not if you're going with a pop-up tent practice how to close it that's why so many get left behind. I think half the time people don't know how to close it. And I did want to demonstrate. Have I got footage of me demonstrating how to close it? I might do, I might do. No, I can't, dem no. I was gonna try, <laughs> I just had a go at trying to explain how to fold up a pop-up tent. No, you can't really talk it through. So I shall move on. The other thing you need to invest in is your feet. So good quality shoes, good quality socks, bring proper decent fabric plasters, the waterproof ones don't stay on, and insoles. <laughs> Comfort is key, don't go for style. There's no point, you, you are gonna be on your feet from morning till eve, well, depending on what you, how you do Glastonbury Festival. There are so many ways you can do it, you might not get up until the afternoon, but still, you'll be on your feet for a good fair few hours, and um, Comfort is key particularly if you're walking from one stage to the other quite a lot so yeah I'm already diverging into the packing list here you'll need to take a pair of wellies a good pair of trainers and I would also you don't have to but if it gets really really hot you might want some sandals wellies don't buy don't bring hunters don't buy hunters wellies <laughs> they're just so ridiculously expensive for what they are and they might get stolen out of your tent. I mean, bring hunters if you want to, but the rule always applies. Don't bring anything that you wouldn't mind losing. So if you spent 100 quid on a pair of hunters, it just seems a bit silly for me. That's my opinion. Don't go for jewels. They look pretty, 
but they're not really up to the task. Also supermarket wellies, also not really up to the task, they'll just split. So the wellies I recommend are good old Dunlops. <laughs> they're not fancy, they don't look pretty, but they do the job really well. And then second of all, you want a good, decent, thick pair of insoles to go in those wellies because you don't get enough support around your feet for walking all day long. Um, so get a good pair of insoles as well. Your trainers are probably much more comfortable. Um, give those a waterproofing spray. I say trainers, I would say I'll change that to trainers slash walking boots or combat boots or you know that sort of thing because there'll be times when you don't want to wear wellies you need a pair of wellies in case it's a wet year i would say don't risk coming without wellies but you do get the years where you might have a shower like just one shower the whole site is automatically muddy but you're not wading through it you'll still need to wade through puddles to get to the popular food stalls and to the areas to get in and out of the main stage fields those areas always get muddy so they will need to be up to you know a good couple of inches of mud but you don't necessarily want to be wearing rubber wellies particularly if it's warm and wet because then you just sweat in them yeah and then if it's really hot i do go tend to wear a pair of quite good quality walking sandals so i know i've got good ankle support you do see people in flip-flops and that might be okay if you're used to wearing flip-flops a lot but don't underestimate how far you're going to be walking and quite often quite quickly as well particularly if you've got clashes with bands and you want to watch the beginning of one band on the pyramid and the end of another band on the other stage sandals with ankles supports and straps go over properly i do recommend um and yeah pack those plasters just in case and most importantly of all if any of those items are new for your feet, then be wearing them in now. Put them on your feet right now and don't take them off <laughs> until after the festival because you need to wear them in and your feet need to get used to wearing them again um, if you haven't worn them since last time. So this year I've had to buy myself some new boots because my combat boots that I had for years, they were so good. I found such a good pair that were lightweight, waterproof, they did me so well, but last time, 2019, they completely fell apart. So new boot year for me this year and I've been wearing them a lot to keep them, they're actually really good, I quite recommend them. Also the thing to do right now is as well as taking out your tent and checking it over, any other camping equipment that you know you'll be taking, sleeping bags and if you take like a foam what they call the sleeping mats as well get them out of your garage or your air and cupboard or your loft or wherever and check the mice haven't been at them since last time you had them out because you're running out of time now to buy something new of course they all have all this sort of stuff on site you'll just be paying extra money for it so another thing that's a good idea to do around now is look at the lineup start your list of what it is you want to see i did that the other day where's my notebook for that here so i've got my planning glastonbury 2022 list and i've just written down every one that i want to see friday there's a hell of a lot of clashes look my list goes all the way down to there and over on friday my list is quite short for the saturday but it is a good idea to have a look work out where your clashes are and where you want to be because that just saves you time. That was actually one of my favorite rituals when we used to come and camp, get your program and then pitch a tent and then relax while you circle everything you wanna see, like, like your Christmas radio times. But these days there's so much more going on on the Wednesday and Thursday. I don't know about you, but I'd just rather be out there and seeing things than, than spending that time and of course, me being old fashioned, I've got a notebook, but you can do it on the app, although I've heard that the app is not very good this year, at least not yet. The reason why I suggest you do it now is also because there might be bands you'd quite like to see, you've heard of them, you might have, um, you might be able to name one or two songs, but then it's quite nice to listen to their music, you know, because then you can, if you know you're gonna be there anyway, it is usually more enjoyable to know their songs because you can sing along you can get involved in the crowd atmosphere 
and so yeah it is nice to get to know some of the songs that you perhaps might not know very well from bands you don't know very well so that's definitely something I do and another thing I do is I look at where I've got two acts so I've got two acts at the Avalon tent and there's one in the middle and there's nowhere else nearby that I particularly want to go and see I definitely look up that band in the middle because I think well I may as well just stay there and listen to them so check out to see whether you like them or if there's a band where you've got gaps like that there might be a band in a nearby stage that uh, that, that you might want to go and find look out for recommendations from other people as well for bands because there are so many I've discovered so many good bands there I really have so it's the best thing to find one song on YouTube and think oh that sounds good I'll go and check them out and then find you love them when you get there so do a little bit of research I am a planner and if you're here too you probably are as well you're not one of those people that rock up and with no plan so <laughs> do some research into discovering some new bands and have fun finding some as I was saying that that triggered something else I was gonna say oh I would also recommend particularly if you've never been there before but it helps, even if you have, it helps build up the excitement is to get yourself on some sort of forum or group. Um, there is the Glasto Chat Facebook group, which um, is quite lively. The only thing I would say about that is I have seen some threads that I've looked through the comments and I'm thinking, you've never been to Glastonbury before. Or they're just, there seems to be a lot of misinformation on there. So I would say, take some of that advice like you would with any other Facebook news check it out don't take it for gospel truth you know but where I've always hung out I think since the beginning <laughs> for a very very long time anyway there's a festival site called e-festivals and they have a chat room area where everyone is usually quite happy to offer advice it is nice reading through the threads and it gives you a nice feel and you do pick up some good advice there too and you can always ask questions if you if there's anything you're not sure of Glastonbury films that's another thing you can do to get yourself in the mood there's the Glastonbury movie this is that the Julian Temple one I can't remember but that's something I shall be digging out. We've got a VHS of one of them. Anyway, that's something I'll be doing over the next week as well, because that's fun to get in the mood. Um, if you want to do some reading, hang on. A personal um, promotion coming up. There's a couple more coming up, I'm afraid. I hope you don't mind. But first of all, if you want something to read in the queue, if you're one of those people that turn up on the Tuesday evening and sit in a chair until you're allowed in on Wednesday morning. You might like to buy Be In The Place by Helen Hobden. It's a teenage romance, so it might not be up your street, but it's set at Glastonbury Festival. And I wrote it in 2000, so 2003, 2004. So it gives you a bit of a flavor of what the festival was like before the super fence. Yeah, quite a while ago. And it's published by Anderson Press. You can get it on Amazon still or let me know and I can send you a signed copy if you would rather. So there we are, that's uh, plug number one. <laughs> Let's get onto the packing list. Don't forget your book. <laughs> so let me check this. I'm checking past blog posts on my blog because this is where I've done a lot of this. So yeah, if you'd rather look at a written version of this video then do go and check out my blog which is called whenigrowupblog.com and type in the search Glastonbury and quite a few things will come up I've done been doing reviews over the years the blog has been going since 2000 and 2003 so it covers quite a few festivals here we go essentials you want your ticket don't forget your ticket, whatever you do, because they will not let you in without it. Some cash, but um, do a mix of maybe cash and card. At least a lot of places will be doing card nowadays, which is really helpful. Your tent, of course, we've sort of talked about that. If you've got a family, if you're going with kids, then I would take a bigger tent so that they've got space to play in. If it's a muddy year or an especially hot year, then having that little bit of room where they can stand even if it's not much but if you can stand up to take their muddy clothes off before you know before they get into their sleeping compartment then that really helps because of course kids 
do get very muddy in a muddy year so yeah i'd go for a slightly bigger tent if you can what else sleeping arrangements well we always managed without an airbed back in my day <laughs> You could go with one of those foam mats if you like for a little bit of extra protection which might not be a bad idea you do want a good night's sleep so i do recommend like i said a good tent a warm sleeping bag i always manage without a pillow but take a pillow case and then you can stuff your coat and your jumpers in there and that keeps it together i always used to just roll up my coat or my jumper and it was never quite good enough but pillows are a pain to carry so that's what I would recommend doing your phone your phone charger if you oh if you can keep your bank card separate from your cash that's a good idea too in case you lose one you've still got the other yeah you want a waterproof mac for sure I would recommend the packer mac ones you know that roll up into a pocket you can of course take the disposable plastic ponchos I kind of wouldn't blame either because they're so lightweight you can scrunch them up and put them in your pocket but of course it is disposable plastic which is not the ethos of the festival so if you know it's going to be a rainy one then I'd bring a a proper waterproof mac and give that a spray with your waterproof coat with your waterproof spray so yeah that kind of brings me on to clothes and this is where i do a little plug for my for my own business i make sustainable bohemian clothing with a sort of fairy tale theme it's called threads of a fairy tale do go and check out my website threads of a .com, and you'll find there some interesting one-of-a-kind festival clothing that hopefully you will love. If there's anything on there that you would like and are worried about postage now because we're getting quite close to the festival, then just let me know. We could arrange to meet up or perhaps I could leave it in one of the lockups and uh, we could meet up somewhere else and I could, I'm not quite sure how the lockups work, it's been so long. I'd probably have to tell you my information or give you a ticket or something but I'm sure we can work it out so we can meet early on in the festival and uh, you could pick up your clothes from there if you'd like any also on the website you will find and this is on my packing list <laughs> a cup carrier and a water bottle bag <laughs> last year well, 2019 when they banned plastic bottles for sale i did see a lot of people wandering around with their flasks and know where to put them so here you go this fits in the glastonbury festival flask the one from water aid and also any sort of similar size bottle will fit there and these i've made out of off cuts from my clothing business and the cup carriers also made with the upholstery samples you know those sample books all completely sustainable and you'll be helping to support a local business i would appreciate it if you think you'd like to buy one of these if you'd like to check out my website so these by the way they've got this um toggle here to keep them tight inside so you don't have to take them out you can just take the lid off and drink like that it's really handy they come with a good long strap this is actually one of my prototypes the strap is actually much longer than this and it's adjustable as well you get a like you get a buckle on it so you can make it as small or as long as you like so it could be a crossbody bag or you could wear it around your waist i usually wear mine around my waist actually um, to keep the weight off my shoulder it's really useful i do i know it's my own my own thing but um it is really useful and yeah these cup carriers are designed to fit the glastonbury pint cups that you get from the bars there you i think the system is you leave a deposit and then you return the cup or you lose your deposit and you keep the cup but um if you want to keep it with you or you're keeping the same cup for the day then I've got you a little cup carrier and you just clip that onto your belt, onto your bag and um, you can carry it around with you so your hands are free for dancing and all sorts. <laughs> so there we are, that's my little advert, I hope you don't mind. Right, I'm just going to read off here, so I'm sorry if I'm not quite looking at you. So don't forget sun cream important you can buy it there but it's quite often difficult to find if it's a really hot year chapstick with sunblock i would highly recommend that i always get burnt lips um bin bags now these are exactly what you will need if it's um a damp year <laughs> if it's super muddy you're gonna struggle to sit down anywhere 
but if it's just a damp or you know a little bit muddy then a bin bag is essential because there you can't sit on the ground but you're exhausted and your feet are hurting so take a bin bag sit on the mud on the bin bag when you get up put the bin bag inside out and then you can scrunch that up and put it in your bag or your pocket honestly it's a game changer so take one for each day and then one for your rubbish deodorant toothbrush toothpaste baby wipes loo roll paracetamol uh, your water bottle mentioned already a small torch i take this tiny little one that goes on the end of my on the edge of my bag because at night time the loos are not always under a light and you want to know what you're sitting on don't forget any other regular pills or medication you take tampax or towels if it's your time of the month i mentioned good quality socks earlier you don't want to be taking the ones with the holes in the heel it's not the time for them oh here's a good tip for you a set of clothes if you're going by car a set of dry clothes to stay in the car there's nothing worse than getting in the car on the monday morning or the sunday night wet through and then you've got to stay in those clothes to drive home you don't want to be doing that so a spare set of clothes and i suppose it's good to have them for an emergency as well so those are your main things then i've got a list of extras you might want to take a flag and a flagpole to put up by your tent so you can always find your tent not for the crowd no 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 no. food and drink that depends a lot on your budget it's obviously going to cost a lot more if you buy it on site and, and also how many trips back to the car or if you're going by public transport you might not have the space to take much but i do recommend taking cereal bars and things that don't melt that you can take with you for the day because you always get stuck somewhere when you're starving and the food around you is either too expensive or not really quite what you fancy sunglasses actually i'd say they're an essential they are for me anyway a camera no that's not these days <laughs> this is an old list everyone just uses their phone i usually take my camera in one day a week one day of the festival yeah oh a camping chair that's an option it is sometimes nice to have back support i'm getting on you know and i'll show you a quick clip of what i always take and that's this little fold out chair it's really lightweight you carry it around it gives you a little bit of cushioning under your bum but most importantly it gives me back support and because it just goes on the ground you can go right to the front of a crowd and sit down and know you're not blocking anyone's view behind you dry shampoo hairbrush makeup fairy wings foot pump if you're taking an airbed a pillow would be a bit of a luxury punch a repair kit for your airbed or possibly if you're taking a trolley or a wheelbarrow to take your stuff in razor jewelry nothing you wouldn't want to lose stuff like that the, the more luxury stuff if you're going with kids i've got a little list i'll just run through these quickly take a roll out ground sheet so that you can sit near the back of the pyramid field or whichever stage you're at and they've got a little bit of room to crawl around sit around with their coloring stuff around them you know take coloring books little cars anything little that they can carry themselves ideally in a little rucksack um, and entertain themselves when they're not interested in the music because they won't always be poi are a great thing for kids our kids always took poi and you know they want the, those are those things you do this and they swirl around or a fold up hula hoop something like that um, then they can enjoy the music and they get they love the attention <laughs> basically all the adults are like oh look at them they're doing their poi and yeah they love it <laughs> also if you've got kids make sure they've got some identity on them like an identity bracelet um one of uh, name uh thing somewhere with your phone number basically what are they called lanyards that's it sun hats when they're, if they're very small you could take them in like a well ours was called a woody wagon it's like a radio flyer american radio flyer truck thing that you garden truck that you can pull them around in that was actually really worthwhile <laughs> yes and sometimes a big rucksack just isn't big enough to take your stuff from the car to the campsite so a wheelbarrow or a garden truck is often quite a good thing i'm sure i've missed something if you're watching this and you've thought of something you think well what about that 
please do put it in the comments share any other tips and advice for what people should be doing to prepare for the festival it's a bit i would have said get fit but it's a bit late for that <laughs> a, a good bit of stamina for all that walking would would be a good idea anything else you think of please get a conversation going in the comments give each other tips and advice ask any questions i have been going for some time the first festival we went to is in 95 and I camped until we moved here 14 years ago. So yeah, ask any questions, anything you'd like to know. I'm, I should be able to help. Obviously my experience as a festival goer is always gonna be different from everyone else's. We've always gone with, a fam with our kids, apart from one year, we had a year off. But apart from that one year, we've gone with kids. So my experience might be quite different from yours if you're in the naughty corner until 4 a.m. So, or later. So I might not be able to answer everything but um, hopefully I can help you out. I nearly forgot something else that's quite important actually, and that's the bag that you carry around with you on a daily basis. And I have another video all about that and what I carry and um, the bag that I take. I'll put that video up here off the top of my head. I think that, that one's more in depth because I filmed it just as I was going into the festival or just after, I can't remember which now. But off the top of my head, you'll need that bin bag, the chapstick, one of those travel sun creams, some rolled up toilet roll and a plastic bag so it doesn't get wet. What else do I carry around? Your money, your phone, a cereal bar. Uh, you don't really need to take a lot with you. I usually take um, another clip on because I've got sun, because I'm a glasses wearer. So I take my, I've got a, a glasses case that clips onto my bag. So that has my sunglasses in to swap around. Um, and if it's really pouring with rain, I will take an umbrella as well because, again, glasses wearers, you just cannot see. I know it's annoying for everyone else in the crowds. I just take a little one, it barely covers me. <laughs> what else, what else? Well, go and watch that video. Um, that'll have anything else that I have forgotten. I think that's it from me. If you found this video useful or have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, that really helps me out. Do check out my other videos and hit subscribe if you'd like to see more from me. I've done a few Glastonbury Festival videos, so do check them out. I've got a playlist which I shall pop up somewhere. Hopefully there'll be more Glastonbury related entertainment that you'd like to watch. Yeah, that's all from me. Take care, have a great festival. If you see me, do wave. And uh, don't forget to go to threadsofafairytale.com for your festival clothing and your bottle bag and your cup carrier. And perhaps I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.